This hunt here is one of those really fun hunts, a really easy hunt. What it is, is it's just a general public land, over the counter elk deer hunt in Montana. My guest hunter on this hunt is Tim Lesser. Tim lives in Oregon. He's the director of product development for Leupold. Tim and I got talking about what's a hunt he could come and do in Montana. And I said, Tim, we've got leftover tags here. You should come and join me in November. Tim said, if that's all it takes, I can just go buy it over the counter right now or get online and buy it. Count me in, I'll be there. So I think what we'll do, Tim, we got about a thousand foot climb here through the trail and then the trail dies and then we have to push back so it'll take us about an hour to get up there but we'll be warm by the time we get up there here we are it's the, the week of november 10th through the 15th and the weather forecast is cold. As you can see, I'm bundled up. The, the highs for this whole week are supposed to be somewhere in the teens. The lows are going to be anywhere from 15 to 18 below at night, so it's chilly. You can see where the light starts opening up there. That's kind of the main ridge that goes this way. So once we get there, we'll go around the corner. There's some openings out there. We'll glass some of those and hopefully there's something out there. But if not, we just keep kind of scanning and walking these ridges until we'll get up to the highest ridge and then we can see a lot from the highest ridge. Okay. But if you want to shoot one on the lower ridge, on the way up, yeah. yeah, there's no problem. Nothing, <laughs> nothing says you can't shoot them closer to the truck. Fair enough. <laughs> The primary goal for this hunt is to find him an elk. I've already filled my elk tag a couple weeks ago, so I don't, I don't have a tag. I grew up hunting. I grew up hunting with my father. Uh, my cousin's an outfitter in the state of Wyoming, and so I got to go guide with him for several years. I love being out here doing this, and it, it ties back to my job at Loophold really well. Uh, I miss being in the field all fall and doing this for days on end. But on the other hand, I like being a part of bringing new products out that help others do this in the field. And so it's kind of a, a good balance. Come out here with Randy, get to do things like this, and then I, I get to take that back to, uh, back to the office and see what we can do to improve upon existing stuff. One of the benefits of having a deer elk combo tag is even if the elk aren't, aren't around or they're in places you just, you know, elk are a tough critter to hunt. If you aren't finding elk in Montana because you have that deer part of the combo tag, deer are a lot easier to find, especially in November when they're rutting. So in this hunt, there's a very good chance that we will go and look for, for elk but as a secondary or ancillary opportunity, if we see a good buck, I'm gonna tell Tim, hey, <laughs> that's what we're here for, shoot him. With a hunt like this, you really have two strategies. You either hike in, build a fire above a bunch of meadows, and you just tough it out for the day, and glass and hope that the elk start moving into these meadows where you know they might stage. Or you go down these old logging roads, old forest service roads, old two tracks, park the truck, walk out on these ridges, and just glass and glass and glass 
I mean, people are going to watch this and say, man, that's all they do is just glass. And you're right. This is steep, tough, nasty country, and the weather's cold. Glassing is the most effective way to hunt it. You're trying to make the most of your opportunity. And that opportunity comes by glassing and finding them, seeing where they're at, watch where they bed, what they do, and then go after them. We got about 45 minutes of legal shooting light left. So I'm thinking we start walking out of here where we saw all those deer tracks this morning. Okay. There might be a buck moving does in there. I think it was the second day of this hunt. It was brutal cold. That morning it was 15 below zero. And uh, I picked him up and we're driving out and I don't know if he's thinking what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking, you know what? It's gonna take a really big animal for me to run out and bail down and up and around in, in these kind of hills and these canyons before I'm gonna get out <laughs> and go expose myself to this type of condition. <laughs> it's frosty this morning, Tim. When that wind blows, it's just brutal. But uh, I, I think our best bet today, if you're okay with this, is to just come out on these points and just glass to the east. It's, I mean, like right now, we saw that buck way out there, another buck way out there. So we've seen three bucks. Yeah, they're a long ways away. But they're gonna bed down, or the does are gonna bed, and they're gonna hang out there. Maybe we'll see an elk, I don't know, but for safety purposes, I don't care to go on a big long hike when it's 15 below and the wind's blowing. Yeah, totally on board with that. <laughs> it can be a bit dangerous when it starts getting <laughs> uh, It's not sick old day today. It is, yeah, it's uh, will be attractive on camera today for sure. <laughs> well, I think what we might do is uh, Grab the spotter trail, walk back to the truck, and then we'll just drive up to another little ridge we can walk out on and just keep doing it until we find a buck that we know for sure is worth looking at here. There's a ton of tracks up on the top of those ridges, like they're elk tracks, like I heard of elk cancer, so they're gonna have to be out moving during the day also. Sure. I mean, when it's this cold, they just gotta find feed and burn some, get some calories in. So if you're good with that. I'm good with that. Oh, I'm not as tough as I used to be. <laughs> right out. See where that rock cliff is up there? Mm -hmm. Come down about seven o'clock from there. Funny part is, Tim, you don't have to walk very far out on these ledges to get a better viewpoint. Most people just drive the road just by walking a couple hundred yards out here. All of a sudden you can see so many places that other guys just drive right on by. But, that's a four by four, but he's only about 18 inches wide. Right. Well, Tim, the four by four. But uh, I don't know if he's what you're looking for. He, he's probably a three and a half year old deer. Yeah, he looks uh, looks a little young. He's pretty deer. Yeah. a bunch more ridges we can walk down. And Sounds like a great plan. As cold as it's going to be all day, I think deer are going to be moving all day long. We drive out on this Forest Service Road and we walk out to the points and we glass nothing go to the next point glass nothing and we're doing that all morning and i guess it's about 10 in the morning 
we stop and we go to this one point and as much as I'd like to say, hey, I glassed up this buck, our cameraman, Tyler, he's got eyes like a hawk. He's like, there's a good buck over on that hill over there. And sure enough, there was. Well, Tim, I think you found yourself a buck you might want to shoot. It looks good, doesn't it? Based on hunting in Montana, I would shoot that buck. <laughs> a beautiful buck. Yeah. We're not very far from the truck. Everybody's just driving past us, and he's over there horning a tree. If people would just get out and walk 100 yards instead of just drive along and see what's obvious, the obvious ones aren't the ones you want to shoot. But we're just going to have to watch him and see what he does. If he comes straight down, we're just going to grab and run back, get our packs, and we're going. Or, but he's kind of going back north. If he goes north, we're going to have to circle around him and get ahead of him. It's been a long time since I've watched a buck rut this hard. Scraping and rubbing. <laughs> he's getting after it. The bad part was, from our position, we had to drop down a canyon 800 vertical feet in less than a quarter mile, climb back up the other side in less than a quarter mile, and gain another 450 feet on snow, blow down, burned out timber. That's brutal. And he finally comes in and beds down. He finds his does and he beds down and it's now or never. It's sun starting to head down and it's cold, but we bail off this hill and we're headed straight down a sheer, kind of a sheer face. And in the rut, if you can see some does bed, the buck is either going to just stay there walking around them or he's going to bed with them. And when we saw those does bed, that was our chance. The buck bedded right near him, and whoom, we got to go, and we got to go fast. we take it's going to be up so we'll try to get in there get up above and take a nice peek down and that way we can cover the escape routes as well It took us to go down that canyon and up the other side, it took us an hour and a half to get there. And when we get there, we're like, where are they? Where are they? As we come over the edge, we need to back off and slide a little over to the right Holy cow, that's a nice buck. And I gave it a range, 149 yards, and Tim was ready. I mean, he was already leaned across the pack, had the CDS dials all dialed up, had the howa just 
waiting for the, the command to shoot. And I'm thinking, come on, Buck, clear that brush. And he stood there. The buck just stood there behind the brush for what seemed like, I don't know, probably was only a minute or two, but it seemed like 10 minutes. You good? Yeah. He's dead. That is one big dead buck. Thank you guys. Epic moments. That's what we do. Thank you so much. What a oh, shot. Worth every minute. Through the grass, through the brush. <laughs> the crap the didn't get to see this. We had to stop and change batteries because in this yeah. minus zero weather, we're going through batteries like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Montana. Thank you so much, Randy. One more. <sighs> and that quickly, Tim has shot the nicest mule deer buck we've ever taken in seven years of producing TV. There he is. He's, he's growing. Uh, I've been trying to hold in some of the excitement so I don't look too spastastic on TV, but I'm not sure Ooh. that I can do that anymore. <laughs> and he does it on public land in southwest Montana with vehicles driving by us and ATVs driving by us. Look at this. We got one, two, three. He got on that. He got over there. One over there. Look at the bladed eye guard he's got. Mass. Super mass. Big heavy horn. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Thank yes. You. Worthy chase today. We left the truck. We left this morning at 14 or 15 below zero. And the deer were out in force. And this guy is proof to show. Yes. What a day. I can't even tell you how happy I was. I've never killed a buck that big. I've seen very few that were that big. And I just, I was elated. I was trying to keep my emotions under control on camera. Uh, it hadn't really settled in that it was real, but we had that buck, we had him on the ground, and I couldn't have been happier. Now we gotta get the deer out of this canyon, and we are focused on elk. It's elk, elk, elk. And I told Tim, I said, you know, I think the odds of us finding a bull elk in here are better than the odds of finding a good mule deer. And the reason I said that is last year I did this same hunt. And the very first day of the hunt, just a few miles over to the west of here, here comes a group of four bulls right underneath me. I'm thinking, I'm taking Tim up in there and we're gonna find a way to get him a bull. And we tried. We hiked and we glassed. We drove and we glassed. And we fought snow, we fought Everything you can think of, cold, wind. We built fires to stay warm. We did everything we could to find him an elk. But when I zigged, the elk zagged. Then I can't stand much more of this wind up here. I think we're at the point where trying to tough it out is starting to be stupid. And so we don't get an elk. It's not the end of the world. What we did get is we built a friendship. We spent some time in some cool country. I got to learn some places that I'd not been to even though it's only 80 miles from my house. And we still got a really, really good buck. And for that, I'm thankful. And I'm thankful that a place like Montana is a place that still emphasizes the opportunity for hunters to hunt. With long seasons, lots of places to go in good numbers of games.